What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 26, hope you guys are doing well man, uh, can't wait for today's episode, it's part 2 of the rebuild with Liverpool, uh, obviously we've brought back Curtis Jones from Atalanta, Eberechi Zays came in from Relegated Palace, we signed Ben McKenzie, our former youth prospect with the Cherries and Musa arrived as part of a swap deal as well. We're, we're still going to try and clear out some of the Deadwood in today's episode, we'll have our first games with Liverpool including our first ever Merseyside derby against Everton and we'll play for the remainder of the window and try and wrap up the rebuild today so loads to get through we're cracking straight on and so the first thing we see is Joel Matip has agreed to join Al Hilal in Saudi Arabia for a nominal transfer fee so it gets his salary off the books in the final year of his contract don't mind that obviously with the Saudi Pro League bringing in some uh, some big names uh, to sign Neymar, Koulibaly, Ruben Neves recently so totally fine with that um, I would say looking at the team right now, again, money obviously isn't an issue, but I do feel as though we are going to need another new centre-half coming in. Danilo's retiring come the end of the year. Jarrell Hato's an amazing young Dutch defender. Uh, but 78 overall, I'd like someone a little bit better to partner alongside Ibrahim Okonate and Reese Williams and Nat Phillips just aren't going to cut it now. So there are a couple of names on the shortlist and one I really want to bring in from a relegated team as well. So I've, I, I've used a couple of these players before, including Nathan Collins, but I would love to bring in Levi Carwell. I don't think I've used him before, but he's an amazing young English defender. Can play left back and can play centre half. And to me, I think as an LCB with the stats he's got, he would be absolutely perfect for this system. I don't think I've used him before, so I'm excited to give him a go for the first time. Down to the challenge with Brentford, but too good for the second tier. Let's bring him in. Yeah, I know I've signed Nathan Collins about six times. <laughs> so, I have said before, li li for certain players, I mean, Eberet Gize, for example, I know I've signed him a couple of times as well. I can't, I can't always get it right, and obviously I have naturally done so many saves over the years. It's, it's only natural there is going to be an overlap at times. Why would I swap you Musa? I bought him in four weeks ago. Um... Uh, naturally, like I said, if I've, uh, if I've done so many career modes over the years, naturally there are going to be certain players that will appear in multiple saves. But I don't think I have used Levi Cole before. I don't remember doing so. But he would fit this Liverpool system like a glove, man. Absolute glove. So let's go £40 million. Pounds. And Thomas Frank says, no, he still believes he can get a little bit more. That's that English player tax. Let's go 41.5 million pounds. I say that's fair in this market. 23 years old, English player, homegrown and trained in the nation and getting better and better. 41.5 mil, we'll take it. I'm not quite sure why he left Chelsea to join a West London rival in Brentford. Perhaps he wasn't getting the game time there under Pochettino, but we know he's in real life and he's a heck of a talent. He spent an equal amount of time playing both left back and centre half at Stamford Bridge, but I do plan to play him in that CB slot alongside Ibrahim Okonate. Again, I don't think I've used him before, but he's an amazing young English defender and certainly one that's going to get even better and better here at Anfield. Too good for the championship, returning back to the Premier League. Welcome to Liverpool Football Club, Levi Colwell. Yeah, buzzing with this. And again, it, there's no reason why he can't be a left-back in the team. He's got the pace to do that. Again, he spent an equal amount of time playing left-back on the potch as well. To me, I would say as an LCB, that's what makes him perfect. He's really good at bringing the ball out from the back. Very comfortable in possession. And to me, with Ben McKenzie coming in, I see him being our success for Andy Robertson, not Levi Cole. So that being the case... Uh, I think, to be honest, I might actually get him on a defensive wide back development plan to begin with and then change him to CB afterwards. That way I can get the defensive work credit from medium to high and also get that acceleration up to try and balance it alongside sprints. So that's what I'll do first. I'll, I'll, I'll get the defensive work credit up to high and then I'll change him to, uh, to centre half. For those curious, by the way, uh, Jaden Dance uh, wasn't in the save when I began this one. So annoyingly, I, uh, I can't have him. Such a great young striker, but unfortunately, um, yeah, not, not in this save, annoyingly. Um, but yeah, looking, looking at the team right now, I've got to say, I'm, I'm liking it. It's starting to take shape. You know, the, the, the rebuild era is in full swing right now. And I, I still wouldn't mind bringing in one or two more players, probably for the bench primarily. Um, but for the most part, I'm liking it. It's still, still a couple of players I'd like to sell, just get their salaries off the books, such as Yaros, a uh, third choice goalkeeper, and possibly Nat Phillips at 29 now as well. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I'm liking him. I'm liking him. I'm, I'm ready for our first game, to be honest. Oof. But uh, before we get there, uh, Chelsea want to bring in one of my favourite players in, uh, in FC, which is Conrad Lima. 
The uh, the Austrian holding mid that's very very versatile. I was I was looking forward to giving him a go personally, but moving on from uh, from RB Leipzig to Bayern Munich to Liverpool and now possibly a Chelsea. They're the champions. They're playing CL football. He's more than good enough for that. I don't really think I can stand in his way personally. So I'm I'm happy to negotiate with Potter. That's a shame. I I really like him. Very versatile, good defensive player. Uh, but if, if they if they meet £40 million, pounds, then uh, I, I will take that from Mauricio Pochettino. £40 mil for Conrad Lima and uh, a chance to go back and play Champions League football, play four now the English champions. Yeah, I, I can't stand in his way there. Still will keep him in the squad for the first game against Everton where Lukaku has just joined Bournemouth. How about that? Uh, we've been asked to win the domestic double this season. So yeah, no European football to worry about. That is a bonus, but that's still going to be a heck of a tough ask. If we're going to do that, we need to start off with a win. Our first game, a Merseyside derby away at Goodison. Talk about being thrown at the deep end. First game, come on Liverpool. You might notice there in the top left that the, uh, the scoreboard has, uh, has changed. The graphic overlay, I like that. I like that a lot. And hopefully it means that we'll, uh, we'll see. The Salah, yes, come on, drills in the first goal in the Liverpool era. And it's the, it's the vet who's been here for a while that gives us our first goal with the Reds. I'm hoping that means that the, uh, the, the graphic animation has changed for the second half, or it says end second half. Hopefully now it will say start a second half. But even so, Salah uh, starting our era with Liverpool off with the opener, and we take the lead at Goodison. It's crazy, man. All, all the change in what's been just over three years with this Liverpool team, but it's still Mo Salah's side. Opening the scoring, 1-0 Liverpool. Yeah, I'm not even sure if it's up for debate, but I think Mo Salah is Liverpool's most loved player since the great Steven Gerrard is... Oh, what a... Fit. Oh, no, it's off the bar, but the rebound is turned in. Um, for, for all the things he's done for the Reds, over 200 goals for the club since so coming in seven years ago. Uh, for all the things he's won with them, what a goal this would have been, by the way. In the end, it's a lovely pass off the uh, crossbar for the finish by Incisio. But, um, yeah, I, I think the Salah, to me, like he, he possibly could have left Liverpool when he was at his absolute peak, forced to move for if he wanted to, didn't, stayed loyal... Um, and that's why I think we should stay loyal to him as well. I know he's out of contract coming the end of the season. I know we're going for a rebuild. But we talked about those veterans here we want to keep and help mentor the young lads. Mo Salah, one of the best we could have. So I think he, like Diaz and Alisson, will be staying as well. One wanted a break, though. And is someone going to find a winner here? Up with a ball. Cliver. Oh, Carl Soler with the finish. And we've... Uh, We've gone behind from a leading position. Well, this is a rebuild. It is going to take some time to get this Liverpool team to where we want to get them to. But this is going to be a stinging opening day defeat. From a goal up to a goal down, it's the Spaniard to give Everton their first lead of the game. All right, this is, uh, this is something where you can't panic, but it certainly is a little worrying. As Konate does brilliantly there. And if you okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Sorry guys, give me a sec, give me a sec, give me a sec. Might not have the blistering pace that he wants to, but he's got enough. Rolls it across. And Curtis Jones on his second debut levels it. What a thriller of a Merseyside derby. Come on, don't don't trail again. Don't trail again. Oh, once again, it's a brilliant through ball. All game long, Everton have been splitting open my defence with through balls. And I've just not had an answer for it. It's a brace for Incisio. And once again, the Toffees are in front. All, all game long, they've found space in my back four to thread the needle. And it's 3-2. Well, I mean, we've, we've brought in Musa. We've brought in the young lad McKenzie. We've just brought in Levi Colwell after shipping three on the opening day. I think it's safe to say we might need yet another defender because this... It's just not been working, but the through balls in this game for both teams have been unbelievable. Cody Gakpo makes it 3-3. What a Merseyside derby this has been, man. What a thrilling game to start off with. Surely not. Surely not. Surely not. Oh my goodness, what is going on today? Through ball after through ball. Is this what's coming with the new patch? Like, just constantly getting exploited by free walls because every single goal has been not necessarily a carbon copy but it's been it's came through the same way there's a fan on the pitch there it's how's he how's he where are the stewards what's going on every single goal has been scored via a free ball this is unbelievable 4-3 Everton have won it well this is uh Oh, brilliantly done. Salah, oh, what a game. 
It's 4-4. Four, four. Mo to the rescue. And Liverpool level in the final seconds. What what a game of goodness. What a way to start. Well, whilst it's safe to say this guy is not quite the player he once was in his prime, that opening day draw might have you think otherwise. He's nowhere near as quick. Obviously, he's lost all his pace, but he's still got the technical ability. So with that being the case, I'm giving this guy an extra one year with his contract coming at the end of the season. If nothing else, just as a, a vet senior leader in the dressing room, he could possibly be moved in field in his final year or two. But... Yeah, he's still got the technical ability, if not the pace anymore. I'm giving him an extra one year. Would he take a pay cut as well? Because I'd love to see that. No, he wants a pay increase. That's annoying. Um, Mo, you're not you're not in your prime. Anymore. What is going on with the lag today? You're not in uh, you're not in your prime anymore, bro. Like I'm, I'm I'm sorry, but it happens to all of us. It happens to every one of us, mate. Oh, come on. All right, fine. 130 grand a week. 130 grand a week. And that opening day draw showed you he can still bail Liverpool out when required. Mo is staying. Is Robertson out of contract yet? No, he's not. Allison is, though. Allison is. I, to be fair, Allison's not getting any worse yet because goalkeepers don't tend to go down until their mid 30s. He's 33, so I might give Allison an extra one year as well. But uh, I, I, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. We, we do need to sell a couple of these players here, though. Like, a couple of players who just don't have the ability anymore. I think. Re How old is Reese Williams now? 20, 25. He can probably go. Same with Nat Phillips as well. Um, and, uh, and yeah. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Do we, do, we have, do we have any more bids coming in? Oh, we do. There's a loan. Oh, oh Conrad Lyon was just gone. Conrad Lyon. Okay, there we go. Lyon was off to Chelsea. £40 million. And uh, couldn't can stand in his way there as he goes to the Champions. So we definitely need a new CDM now. And just looking down the list of players here. So we used Hjalman in the Swansea save. Can't really get Nunez at Manchester City Champions League side. This guy is, is one of my all-time favourite players in this year's FC. But we have used him before as well. Um, I, you know, I, I wouldn't be against bringing in Bubakar Kamara. Because Aston Villa, they're, they're not a European side. They haven't been since the save began. He's 26 years old in the prime of his career. And... I have to say, if he was if he was going to move, he would go to a European side, but no one's put the bids in yet. You know, we finished, oh, I say we, Liverpool finished above Aston Villa last season. Villa haven't been a European side since they began. I, I, I would quite like to give Bubakar Camera a go. I haven't used him in issues FC, and I think he'd be the perfect replacement for Conrad as well. Yeah, last year Aston Villa's finished in 12th, so not a great season for them. They've not been a European team since the save began, and Camera would fit this Liverpool team perfectly as well. Excellent stamina, great composure, and really comfortable on the ball, as well as being a tough tackling DM that can also fit in at CB as well. I, I think with Aston Villa still not being a European side, can't get back into the European places, and Bubakar. Possibly jumping ship to a team that finished above them last season and have ambitions of being back in the big time. I think this move makes perfect sense for all parties. Let's bring him in. Do you fancy Reese Williams, Unai? I doubt it, but uh, I might as well offer it, right? We'll put in a valuation bid plus uh, one of our fringe centre-halves and they say, nope, they want a lot of money. Well, if we're going to get him, we've got to pay a pretty penny and then some. Unsurprisingly, though, you know, yes, Aston Villa haven't been a European side in a save since... Uh, season one but they don't need to sell he is one of their best players as well and one of the best in his role right now in the premier league so 57.5 no seems to have to spend let's go and meet in the middle around 60 million it's a lot but with inflation i'd say it's probably fair in this market <laughs> and i still says no Sixty-two point five mil. Sixty-two point five mil for Bubakar. There we go. It's a lot of money, but he's the perfect player for this Liverpool system. Sixty-two point five mil, and he's on his way to Anfield. In the first season of the save, Aston Villa were playing Europa Conference League full, but since then have failed to maintain European football of any kind whatsoever. Finishing twelfth in the table last year, Bubakar Cameron, knowing at twenty-six years old, if he's going to make the jump up to the next step, he needs to play for a club with grand and ambitions. Possibly playing Champions League football next year, but at least targeting European football of some kind, making a move from Villa Park to Anfield on a five-year, 110 grand a week contract. I am buzzing with this. Welcome to Liverpool Football Club, Bubakar Camera. He got a red card on the opening day. How about that? A red card on the opening day. Not a great way to bow out from Villa Park there after all the years he spent under Unai Emery, but... 
I think this is a perfect signing for us, no doubt about that. Neither team playing European football, but I'd say we've got the better chance of doing it for next season. Camera is in as our new anchorman in our midfield trio. His stats are absolutely perfect for the way we want to play as well. Ball retention, good DLP, good play that sits back, protects the back line as well. This is a great signing and a perfect replacement for Comrade Lima. And as we just negotiated a loan offer there for Yaros, that's our third choice goalkeeper, a loan to buy Copenhagen. Not sure if we'll go for it or not. Loan to buy deals don't normally work for me. But uh, Getafe want Ben Doak, of course, going to turn this one down. Um, through the Celtic Academy, because he was signed so young, uh, it does mean that he can become technically homegrown and trained after three consecutive years. So I think now he would have it, I believe, I think. But uh, when he hits 21. But there we go. Uh, Yaros is going to go out on loan. So when that deal goes through, fingers crossed permanently come the end of the season, that'll be another player's salary of the book. So gradually, we're starting to clear out a little bit of the deadwood here and just start to build a Liverpool team that we want. It's taken, it's taken its time, but these things do take time. And interestingly enough, Sporting Lisbon have put a bid in for Nat Phillips. Now, personally, I'd prefer to keep him in the Football League, but he did spend a year out on loan in Germany. I can't remember who he played for. Uh, but I know he spent a year out on loan in Germany many, many years ago now. And uh, I'm, so I'm, I'm actually not against that. I say this a lot, but like, I'm not against selling players outside of the English football pyramid if they've had experience doing that before. It's, it's not completely unrealistic. And English players nowadays do tend to move outside of England a lot more frequently than they did when I was a youngster. When I was a youngster, having an English player playing outside of England was incredibly unlikely. I could only name a few, such as Owen Hargreaves, for example. But like I said, if a player's got previous doing it, I'm not against selling him there. Nat Phillips, like I said, spent a year in Germany. Can't remember who with. I want to say Schalke. I don't think that's right. But uh, still, four and three quarter mil, and uh, he's now going to sports Lisbon. Right, following game in our first at Anfield as we welcome Newcastle United looking for our first win as Liverpool manager. Can't give Cameron his debut, but I will give the young lad Ben McKenzie his at right back heading into this game. Able to defend a lot better, that's for sure, after chipping four on the opening day, going for our first win with our new team. Come on, Liverpool. So a reminder, the board have said they want us to win a domestic double this season. That's not my objective, though. I think that's a bit too much for our first season in a rebuild year. Oh, great claim, Alisson, there for a crowd of bodies. I, I just want to get us back in Europe, man. It doesn't need to be Champions League. Champions League is the, 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 the dream, if you will, the top four. But even if it's Europa League, even if it's Conference League, just getting European football of any kind back in Anfield for next season, that is the aim in our rebuild era. Great work from Luis Diaz. There's Andy Robertson. the Scott. I see you, Cody. It's your job to sell. Oh no, Curtis Jones. What was Salah for a second? Curtis Jones denied as it's still 0 0. Yep, don't need to win the title. That's not my aim. I'm not even thinking about it. I just need to get this Liverpool side back playing European football. Where you going? Where you going? Yep, Robertson went in. Back to the young lad, Ben McKenzie. So at left back, we've got to start him right back in this game. Three star weak foot. Yeah, I think he could fill in there. I'd rather him on the other side, but still, for now, that's where we've got to play him. Diaz to Eze. I see Robertson. Really well worked. Oh, he's still got it. He has still got it. Three goals in two games, and this is why we extended that contract. Pace? Not anymore. Technical ability? Hasn't missed a step. At Arena to Purvis Estupinan. Newcastle sending their fullbacks. Oh, well in, Ben. So far forward, which means that when we win it back, just use that pace down the flanks. There'll be so much space. There's Cody Gapro in the middle. Great first touch. Great dribble in. Great save to keep it at 1 0. 22 minutes to go. Almost there. A second goal will surely wrap it up, and that'll be our first win. Yes! With Liverpool, Cody Gakpo remaining for now. No one's put a bid in yet. Two in two. And I hope it stays that way because this guy is a baller, man. I'm a massive fan of his. Castle force backwards. And is that going to be kept in play? Just about. Oh, poor kick out, though. Guerra off the bench makes it free. Poor kick out. And we capitalise. Yep, yeah, first game was, was pretty chaotic. This has been almost full control. 3 0, job done. And there it is. Waiting for our first win at Liverpool. Didn't need to wait long. We get it in our first game at Anfield. 3-0 win at home to Newcastle and a statement made. We're not in Europe this year, but we need to be for next season. Doesn't need to be CL, but European football of some kind. Perfect first game in front of the home crowd.
And as we've seen, Nat Phillips turned down that move to Sporting Lisbon. Makes sense as well. His, his wages are so high. So selling him is going to be really hard to do due to that inflated contract. And also we agree a loan deal for Tyler Moore to go to Crystal Palace for a year. Uh, we do see another bid for Nat Phillips. This time from Fenerbahce. And also Wolves wanting to take Baron X here. Not, not against selling him. We, we did have him in the Real Sociedad era as part of my Luton Town group. But I did really like him, to be fair. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be against sending him back to Sociedad or back to Spain, but for now we'll keep hold of him as an impact sub for Salah and Diaz. And as for Nat Phillips, we'll, uh, we'll try and get four mil out of the uh, the Turkish side for Nabarch there. But again, the problem is for the, for the clubs that are going to put the bids in, they might not have the resources to give him a similar sort of contract to what he's on right now. So, for example, a Primera Liga side like uh, like with Sporting Lisbon, you might notice they don't have a lot of players on very high contracts. If you do want to sell one of these players here on a crazy weekly wage based on their current rating, you need to try and sell them within England, really. Yeah, I mean, same with Club Bruce. Like, accepting the offer is one thing. Having the player accept a contract, and most likely a big pay cut, is another. Right, following game, uh, Luton Town away at Kenilworth Road. How is it still not being scanned into the game yet, by the way? It's, it's nearly April, crazy. But anyway, uh, looking for back-to-back -back wins here in our first away day victory with Liverpool. Come on, you Reds. I have a theory, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but I have a theory that the reason they haven't done it is because they haven't scanned it. And the reason they haven't scanned it is because Luton, as we know, are building their new stadium, Power Court. I think it opens in two years, I think, two or three years. And I, I, I have a feeling that EA believed at the start of the season Luton would probably go down. And with that being the case, they can afford not to scan in Kenilworth Road and wait until the new Power Court is, you know, built, played at, and if Luton get back in the Premier League, then scan it in for them, I think. That's my theory. It, it's, 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 it's a interesting one because it, it does kind of make sense. But I don't know, man. The EA have made this kind of thing over the years that they'll scan in all the Premier League stadiums. So, so to not do Kenilworth Road, even if they're only playing it for a couple of years, would be uh, would a bit of a shame, really. A couple more years, I should say. Even so, Cody Gap, that's free and free, man. He's on fire to start the season off. I've always thought from EA, it's a real missed trick to uh, to not have old stadiums within the game. Possibly as DLC, possibly as unlockable content, I don't know. But not have, you know, old, old stadiums in the game that are no longer in use. You know, it's, oh, great work from Ben McKenzie. Yes, well in, youngster, who gets his first assist for Liverpool. And Cody Gakbo is just on fire. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you could have, like, you know, Highbury, for example, or White Hart Lane, or Upton Park within the game, it's, again, maybe DLC, maybe unlockable content, or maybe just available right from the get-go. I think that's a real missed opportunity, because it would, it would, you know, put it this way, I would love to have that. I would, I would love to have the opportunity to, uh, to play at those old grounds, man. And Kenilworth Road could be the same. Granted, in two or three years, Luton will be at a new stadium in Power Court, but it's such an old-school ground. It's so unique, built in. Uh, to uh, to terraced housing so have it in the game yeah i think it, i think it'd be a great addition if only luton's main stadium or luton's played stadium for the next couple of years why not no negatives we're having more choice right and there we go back to back clean sheets and back to back wins shipping four on the opening day at everton was a little embarrassing let's just say we've learned from that mistake much tighter defensively, much better for McKenzie as well. An assist and two clean sheets in two games. This kid's the real deal, man. And after the game, as we see Tyler Morton go out on loan to Crystal Palace. I like that as well because, you know, sometimes when a club will sign a player from another team and then they'll loan them one of their younger players. So we just loan them two now. Tyler Morton's gone out on loan. We'll keep an eye on him there. And he's joined Calvin Ramsey, also on loan at Sales Park. I like that. Sign a Brecci Ize and gave them two of our uh, younger players, if you will, on loan. So, um, yeah, deadline day is here. Uh, but I don't know if we'll do anything to us. I'm liking how the team is looking now. And again, we're not in Europe, so we don't need a thick score. Uh, our squad is thick enough to cope with the league schedule and the cup games here and there as well. Hopefully we can sell Nat Phillips, get his salary off the books, because it's a major, major contract to be paying for a player that's barely going to play. And I might make one signing for this squad, but otherwise, the first 11, I'm, I'm really liking it, man. I don't think we need to change it. We are going to need those long-term successes for Salah and Diaz at some point. Um, although right now... Uh, I don't think we need to worry about it too much. Is, is Nat Phillips 
accepted those deals. Oh, he's still negotiating. Okay, fair enough. Now, there is a bit interesting enough for, uh, for Javi Guerra, and uh, I, do, I, I do quite like him. Young Spanish midfielder coming in from Valencia, I believe. But Las Palmas want to take him back to Spain. In this team, you know, we've brought in Musa, we've brought in Ize, we've be, brought in Camera. I don't know just how much game time he's going to get here. Not just this season, but long term as well. I like him a lot, but I wouldn't be against selling him. If we can get around £38 million, pounds, I, I would probably accept it. He's a decent young midfielder. I'm not sure what his ceiling is. I think he'd still be getting a little bit better, but... The problem is there's so many options ahead of him. It's kind of like with Bournemouth when we had like Cliver and Sinistera. These are really good players. But the problem is there's just so many players in that position where they play. And for 39 mil to send him back to Spain, to be fair, I'll take it. Good young player, but unfortunately, just too many players ahead of him in the pecking order, really. Yeah, not to mention we've got Fabio Carvalho on the bench as well. And yes, Musa. You know, we, we, we did say we might play him right back. But Ben McKenzie's played two games there and been even better. So that's another player for him to deal with. Um, just, just unfortunately for Guerra, just a case of too many players in that position. So yeah, I think he's going to go back to Spain, join uh, Las Palmas in the uh, in the Canary Islands, and uh, will take the thirty nine mil. But I wouldn't be against bringing in someone to replace him as well. Yes, really solid players. Keller is wanted by Brighton on loan, but of course going to turn that one down. Um, I, I I think bringing in someone that knows his role as a rotation squad player. Might not be a bad option. Is he going to go or is he going to stay? To be fair, if he wants to stay, I'm okay with that. Nope, there we go. Oh, no, that's not... No, it's not... Is that Phil oh, Nat Phillips is gone. Massive contract. And he wants to take a massive pay cut. Well, thank you, Nat. I, uh, I appreciate that. Maybe we gave him a compensation deal in order to uh, to help that deal go through. But Nat Phillips calls time at Liverpool and he's on his way out the door. This time on a permanent transfer to Fenerbahce. Ah, and there we go. Javi Guerra has turned down a move to Las Palmas and decided to stay here. Well, obviously Liverpool are a much bigger club than Las Palmas, so that does make sense. He'd rather fight for his place. You know what? I respect it. I respect it a lot. You know, saying I'm going to fight for my place in this team, Gaffer, and believe me, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you. I've, uh, I've, I've got the ability to be a, uh, a key member of your squad. I respect it. I respect it a lot. So, what has Nathaniel Phillips now gone on to? Wow, do you know what? I respect that a lot. I respect that a lot as well. Taking over half a pay cut to, to go and play first team football at Fenerbahce in the Super League. I, I respect that a lot as well. The respect given out here. Proof right there, it's not all about the money. It's not all about the money. Respect that a lot. So, with Phillips gone, do we, do we need another centre half? I mean, Danilo's going to be staying till the end of the season, retiring at the end of the year. Reese Williams is just, I mean, he's just not going to cut it. I, I wouldn't mind an extra centre-half coming in, just, just for the squad, really, and a youngster that we can continue to develop alongside Jarrell Hato and Levi Carwell. And to be fair, there, there is another Liverpool player that's left who I wouldn't mind bringing back. He's gone to Napoli, but he's not getting much first-team football there, and he's out of contract coming at the end of the season. Jarrell Kwanza, uh, 23 years old, six foot three. Very physical with 90 jumping and 87 strength as well. And at Napoli, he's like fourth slash fifth choice there as well. Out of contract coming to the end of the season, future uncertain. Um, I'm going to bring him back. Yep, should be able to get him for under the market valuation with his deal up come the end of the year. Left to Napoli, hoping to... No, absolutely not. Hoping to make his mark in the Serie A, but uh, it just never really happened for him there, it seems, as they're not playing him much and he's out of contract coming to the end of the season as well. Should be able to get him for 10, let's say 10 and a quarter mil to bring him back to Anfield where he came through the academy and he is indeed going to put a Curtis Jones and return from the Serie A back to Liverpool and come back to Anfield. So once you've agreed a transfer fee with a club for a player you want to bring in, you can check their squad role directly afterwards. And in Qantas case, as you can see, it is indeed sporadic. And whilst that's the same squad role you have here at Anfield as well, you'll probably get a little bit more game time in the rebuild era. And I'm buzzing to bring him back as a homegrown player. Through the academy, really great young player. Very comfortable on the ball, can press high up the pitch. He's perfect for Jurgen Klopp and he's perfect for me as well. Back on a four-year contract, welcome back home to Anfield. Jorel Quanta, or Jorel Quanta, I should say. But yeah, 23 years old, so still still getting better. 77 rating again. I love the stats here. 87 sprint speed. So again, you can play in that high line and recover and track back. 90 jumping at six foot three means he won't lose many aerial duels. And he's got 87 strength as well. This guy is perfect for Klopp and he's perfect for me as well. Jorel, welcome back to Anfield. Buzzing with his sign in here. 
Especially because, again, don't forget Danilo is going down at 35 years old and he's retiring coming the end of the season. So, yeah, in about a month or two, these two ratings will be switched around, I would say. It means he can compete with Jarrell Hato. He's also right-footed, whereas Hato and Cole are both left-footed. So that, that to me, is a brilliant signing for us there. And uh, I still can't believe Reese Williams is here at 25 years old. But, uh, yeah, you know, I'm happy with how the score's looking, man. We're overloaded at left-back. But otherwise, I'm quite happy. We could possibly sign a new third-choice striker, but I don't think we need to because really, our, our, our main man at Spearheads is more of a false nine at times as a CF to play players in. I, You know, I, I was possibly thinking, I was possibly thinking we could maybe bring in Dominic Solanke. Maybe, just maybe, return to Anfield after the couple of years he spent here. But... Not this year. Maybe next year. But right now, with the cherry still in Europe, I don't. And he's just been given a new contract there. I think. I'd. I'd say no. I'd say not. Not for this year. Maybe next year, but not this year. Yep, that'll do it for the window. As it comes to a close, is it seven new signings? I think it is seven new signings. You see the top deals here. Wow, Ruben Diaz going to Newcastle. That is. Interesting, to say the least. 86.5 mil. Uh, Aston Villa has spent the camera money on Louis Appender going from RB Leipzig to Villa Park, 77.3 mil. And Oroz has joined Nottingham Forest from Osasuna, 56.5 mil. But I'm, I'm happy with how the squad's looking, man. I'm happy with how it's looking. Again, because of all the money we have, we, we could literally have signed any player we want. But we're not even in a European competition of any kind, let alone the Champions League. So signing the likes of Mbappe, for example, wouldn't wouldn't have felt right to me. But bringing in someone like a Eze from Relegated Palace, Curtis Jones coming back, Musa wasn't getting the game time at the San Siro, Levi Colwell from Relegated Brentford. Th these are the sort of options that I'd say for where we are right now with Liverpool, a massive football club, but right now not at their peak, is uh, is probably, in my opinion quite realistically done i'm happy with this i'm happy with it a lot so there we go uh window comes to a close and uh, should we try to squeeze in one more game today one more game Aston Villa at home we've got stoke in the efl cup by the way but it's Aston at home let's, let's let's do one more and end on that yep seven new signings if you count the moose apart exchange deal with ac mid and i'm liking it man i'm liking how the team is looking it's the groundwork in our first year with liverpool being laid but got to keep performing on the pitch let's close out with one more game today Aston Villa at home and try and make it three wins in a row Come on, you Reds. Let's put it on the top there. And, oh, what a touch. Emmy Buendia. He's got such great technical ability, Buendia, man, honestly. And as we're still tied at 0-0 in a very poor game thus far. But it's Cody Gakpo, who just won player of the month, tries to get away from David Allen. He's got the pace, and Martinez denies him. As Salah lifts it. Oh, is it going to go in? Oh! Onto the roof of the net. Still no, no. Wouldn't, wouldn't be a terrible result to end on. But two draws in our first four. If we, if we do want to qualify for the Champions League, well, I say it all the time, man. Got to win your home games. Well, not the best of games to end on, but to be fair, with a new look Liverpool team going for a rebuild. No losses in our first four league games and a goalless draw to a good Aston Villa team. And three clean sheets on the trot as well. Certainly isn't the worst start imaginable, but we will need to pick it up if we do want to be in the top four. But that will do it for today's episode, guys. So big fan of your fortune. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed today's episode, please drop a like. Most of you all have a fantastic day. I'll return in the next one playing through sloggy season with lots more games in the Premier League in our first First ever cup game as well against Stoke City. Have a fantastic day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode of the Realistic Career Mode very soon.